This video is sponsored by Bespoke. One of the biggest things that irks me in film and TV shows alike is when you get those annoying, insufferable characters whose sole purpose is to cause irritation and pain. And these are made even worse if at the end of said episode or film, they never get punished for this and thus receive no comeuppance. You hear me? No comeuppance! Meaning that their completely shitty behaviour is gotten away with, or in even worse cases, the show will even try to justify this shitty behaviour. Leaving you, the viewer, feeling infuriated, whereby you just want to grab said character by the scruff of the neck and have them slammed into that barrel of dip from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I mean, we all love to see karma coming back to bite people in the arse, it gives us a sense of relief, enjoyment, and most importantly, justice. Like, there might just be a god out there after all. Well, what if I told you that there was a show that would work off this entire premise? A show which specialised on showcasing the most awful and insufferable characters you can imagine, only for them to meet some dark, and often gruesome, demise at the end of it. Constantly interrupting people? Get turned into a doll and have your mouth sewn shut. Being cheeky to others? Have your tongue cut out and put into a jar. Refusing to eat your vegetables? Get shredded by a combine harvester. W wait, what? And what if I also told you that this said show was also meant to be for kids? Well, settle down and grab some popcorn, as for this Halloween we take a look at the UK kids show, Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids. A series of cautionary tales for lovers of squeeze. But first, a quick shout out from this video sponsor. Bespoke is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands, and it's free to join. These products include outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and more. And the box lineups are constantly changing each month based on a preference quiz that members get to fill out. So you can always discover something new. One product I specifically like is the Gartman Duffel All-in-One, a water-resistant lightweight bag that can be used both for packing items and for fitting a shirt or suit without it becoming creased or wrinkled. Every box has around $70 in retail value, but only costs $45. The best part is that you can preview your box before it's even shipped. You'll get a box assigned to you, and before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what's coming inside, to decide if you'd like to keep it, swap it for a different box, or skip the month entirely at no charge. To get 20% off your first box, go to the link in the description and enter the code STEVE20 at the checkout. Thank you for watching guys, now back to the review. Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids is a British animated TV series which aired between 2000 to 2006, running for a total of 6 series, and then was briefly brought back in 2011 and 2012, but we'll talk about that controversy a bit later. The show was actually based off a series of books created by Jamie Ricks, with a lot of the episodes from the TV show being directly lifted from them. Each episode would run for about 10 minutes long, and would follow the story of children who have bad behavioural traits, only for them to get a suitable punishment towards the end. The show was pitched to the UK network, ITV, and was immediately greenlit to be part of their children's block of TV shows, CITV which would run in the late afternoons for when kids returned home from school, myself being included as one of those kids. Having the show greenlit for CITV was a bold move at the time, as most of the shows for that network were very safe and kid-friendly. Having numerous stories featuring child characters experiencing brutal deaths and psychological trauma, along with some pretty strong imagery here and there, was a risky move. But the controller of CITV at the time, Nigel Pickard, stated in an interview, We, CITV, had commissioned a lot of cuddly preschool shows and needed some to act as a bridge between the older and younger stuff in the schedule. And the risk paid off, as the show was a big hit with both audiences and critics, going on to win a number of awards over its years of broadcast. For the original series, the show would be set at the Scream Screen Cinema, there we would meet the creepy caretaker, an old man named Uncle Grizzly, brilliantly voiced by Nigel Planner. If there are any children out there who never stop talking, STOP TALKING! 
and a non-talking spider named Spindleshanks. The opening and closing segments of the show would be animated by stop motion by Ealing Animation. These would only be about a minute long and would often involve Uncle Grizzly teaching the audience life lessons, which often involve the bullying and abuse of the spider spindle shakes. I must admit that I'm not a huge fan of spiders, but I really do feel for poor spindle shakes in this series. He's just enjoying himself, being the best that he can be, and bam, pain inflicted. What is it with British stop motion shows and the abuse of spiders? Happy then, drunk. Though only a very short part of the show, I found the stop motion segments to be the highlight of the series, as it contains some pretty creative and bizarre moments throughout. <laughs> Plus you would get the lone child with his creepy crawly popcorn, which would vary episode to episode. Also, I'm a sucker for stop motion animation, so it's also nice to see it utilised wherever possible. The main bulk of the episodes were actually done in traditional 2D animation, handled by Honeycomb Animation. Now, I will admit, the animation for this show isn't the greatest. Animated segments are often reused multiple times in the same episode, with even character models being recycled in other episodes. The character designs themselves are pretty basic, and characters will frequently go off models scene to scene. But, in a weird sense, I almost think that works in the show's favour, as the uncanny design and movements of the characters actually helps play into the creepy nature of the stories being told. It's kind of like how the cheap CGI would make Courage the Cowardly Dog come across as even more eerie looking. Plus, the show didn't have the greatest budget and had to produce 13 10 minute episodes in just 15 months, so I can understand where corners had to be cut. The narration and characters would also be voiced by Nigel Planner, the guy voicing Uncle Grizzly, which gives the feel of this being told like a bedtime story. And I really like the vocal ranges he gives to all the characters. But I'm your sister! Not anymore! Tackled the cold-hearted girl with a bunny in the fridge. Which adds a level of comedy to what is a pretty dark show. So let's get into the stories. The show would feature a different set of characters each episode, and the basic plot of these episodes would be that we focus on a child, or multiple children, who have behavioural problems. This can range from being cheeky, having gross habits, refusing to eat dinner, etc, etc. Then some sort of supernatural element would introduce itself and punish the child for their action. Normally with a punishment to fit the crime. So for example, in one episode, we have a child that would constantly interrupt people while they were speaking, so he would get turned into a puppet and have his mouth sip shut. Normally these punishments would be quite severe, offering a very dark and often morbid outcome for the victim. And honestly, I'm surprised that some of these episodes even made it to airing especially when paired with some of the imagery. Mr. Peeler's Butterflies, for example, has a young boy who refused to go to bed, so he's visited by a guy named Mr. Peeler and his weird looking butterflies. Mr. Peeler states that the boy clearly doesn't need his eyelids for sleeping, and so using a sardine tin opener, peels off the young boy's eyelids and has them made into another butterfly. Which makes for some pretty disturbing imagery. And just in case you didn't catch on to this, the show makes sure to let you know. Still think those were butterflies, children? <laughs> oh dear me, no. <laughs> Ironically, after seeing this episode, I'm sure many kids didn't sleep very well that night either. A Tangled Web focuses on some meth-head Harry Potter-like kid who spends his time abusing spiders. One day he gets a pregnant spider, captures her in a jar, and then cooks her alive by placing her over a lamp. The babies inside the mother also die, so their ghosts fly out of the mother's body and into the child, where they begin webbing up his insides, which gradually starts turning him into a spider. Not only is the sight of him killing the pregnant spider pretty dark, but when the boy has the spiders inside of him, he describes the feeling as having an itchy throat and tight chest. So I can only imagine the amount of kids waking up with a cold one morning, and the poor parents having to convince their child that they aren't infected with vengeful ghost spider babies. Barber of Civil, see what they did with the name there, has a barber who comes along to schools and will cut out the tongues of children who are too cheeky. 
where we not only get a nice image of the tongues the barber has collected in a jar, but we'll also have one of the characters eat one. Lovely stuff. No, stop it, Pedigree, no, I'll be sick! Some episodes that got particularly dark are ones like The Lobster Scream, which features a young girl in a lobster costume getting boiled alive where we hear her agonizing screams. I don't want to go in there! No! No, it's hot! It's hot! along with Puppet on a String, where it's stated that the puppet strings have fused into the boy's bones, even causing him to scream in pain when a surgeon tries to remove them. But I think for me personally, the darkest episode has to be the Chipper Chums Go Strumping, which involves a group of kids who steal some apples from a local farmer. When confronted by the farmer, the kid's dog rushes to defend them and is shot by the farmer. I say. Gosh, that was a pretty rotten thing to do. I just want to point out that for being the potentially darkest episode, I also find it one of the most hilarious, as these kids just talk in such an absurdly stereotypical British manner. Sorry, old thing, I feel a proper bounder. I say, chums, I'm parched. Shall we start with ginger beer? I say, chaps, hadn't we better be getting home soon? Ooh! I say, Alice, I'm most awfully sorry, old girl. What a cad I am. Oh, yes! What a wizard wheeze! Scrumping! Bravo, Cole! Good luck! You could give us a cracking good clip round the ear, then forget all about it. Yes, a biffing box on the nose! Hurrah! Also, there are some weird name choices in this episode, too. Once, horrible Dick Stick called her Sam the Man. I'm sorry, is the guy named Dick Stick seriously in a position to be making fun of other people's names? But this one has to be my favourite. No, that's a jolly bad idea, Ginger. Let's see what Aunt Fanny's put in the hamper for us to eat first. Which, by the way, in the UK, Fanny is another word for vagina. Which is what makes this clip of Dragon Ball all the more hilarious. You let me have your Dragon Ball, and I'll let you have a little peek. What do I care about seeing your dirty old fanny? Anyway, back to the story. The farmer demands that the kids give the apples back to him, but they state they can't as they've already eaten them. Suddenly, the pesticide that the apples were covered in takes effect and kills the kids, where the farmer then takes their bodies and has them compressed into cider, which he then goes on to sell. Don't drink it! <laughs> Unless, of course, you're partial to a little extra body in your tipple. What the fuck? Though the show was proven to be a popular hit, unfortunately as the series went on, the quality did begin to decline. Series 4 had a new theme composed for the show, though not terrible, definitely was a downgrade from the ones used in Series 1-3. to three. Not only that, but the animation itself began to use a lot more motion tweening, which is something I'm not a huge fan of, as I find it just gives it a really cheap look. Then for series 5 and 6, the stop motion segments at the beginning and end of each episode were cut completely. So after the opening credits, we immediately cut to Uncle Grizzly starting the film. Which is a shame, because as I said earlier, the stop motion segments were the highlight for me. <laughs> This resulted in Series 6 being the last of the original show's run, with budgets having to be cut and increased competition from other networks such as CBBC, ITV ultimately decided to take away the weekday CITV block of programmes, with Michael Grade, the ITV chairman at the time, stating, It did not make commercial sense to generally invest into a children's channel, and so as a result, Grizzly Tales was not renewed for a seventh series. However, Grizzly Tales was not quite done. Even though new episodes weren't being produced, old reruns of the show would begin to run on Nickelodeon. The bosses at Nickelodeon must have seen potential in the show, and so it was announced that a brand new series would begin airing on Nicktoons UK in May of 2011. The series would receive a mixed reception from fans of the original series. On one hand, it was great that the series was getting a revival, not only bringing joy to old-time fans, but perhaps giving the opportunity to bring in new audiences too. 
but this new series would also bring in a lot of controversial changes to what had been a staple to the original show. The first and most obvious is that the setting had completely changed. Rather than being set at the Scream Screen Cinema, we're now set at a hotel. Or should I say, the hot hell. Honestly, impressed that they managed to use the term hell in a kids show. And instead of the old cinema owner Uncle Grizzly, we have his half-brother, the Night Night Porter. Though he is still voiced by the same actor, so why they didn't just use the same character I'm not quite sure. But most saddening of all is that my boy Spindle Shakes is nowhere to be seen. Wherever you are little Spindle Shakes, I hope you're doing well and experiencing a life free of pain and abuse. The stop motion segments at the start and end had also completely gone, and instead being replaced with these new CGI segments. I don't want to rip on the CGI too hard, as honestly, it isn't terrible, and does its best to retain the creepy aesthetic. But it is once again a shame to see the medium of stop motion being phased out in favour of this, something that was becoming common practice for a lot of kids media at the time. The rest of the show functioned much the same, where the stories themselves would be animated in 2D, with Nigel Planner still doing his best with providing the voices and narration. But oh my god, what the fuck did they do to the 2D animation? This looks awful. I know that I said the original series animation was nothing amazing, but at least it had its own style where the uncanny appearances worked with the nature of the show. This just looks like your typical dumbed down flash animation that you'd expect to see on a low budget toddler show. With simplistic designs and constant motion tweening used for character movements just make it look so bad. And the overly bright colours really doesn't fit in with the dark nature of the show. Speaking of which, the dark factors seem to have also been toned down for this revival series, and it did feel like the show was starting to run out of ideas. There were still some alright ones scattered about, such as in season 8's episode, Nails in the Coffin, in which a girl is wanting to become a cat after hers drowns in a pool, only to end up also drowning at the end of the episode. But her fingernails are said to have kept growing after death, as we see them eerily rising up from the grave and waving towards the house. But even so, I don't think the stories ever did quite reach the grimness of the original series, and the cutesy looking flash animation really doesn't help. Despite my criticisms of the new format however, the show apparently did pretty well with audience numbers, so it does seem odd that it was cancelled so soon in the following year. Honestly, I would really like to see this series make a return as I really like the idea of obnoxious and despisable characters getting a justified grisly demise, as I think a lot of other people would too. And with kids shows tending to take a more general audience approach with more darker and mature themes, I think this is a show that could do well with modern audiences. Just so long as they give it a better budget which means the animation doesn't have to suffer too much. But who knows what the future holds. And until that day, all we can do is take lessons from what the show offered us. Don't be cheeky, don't steal from farmers, and for the love of God, make sure to eat your vegetables. And until the next one, take care, and happy Halloween.